Hi, this is a quick revision of Carol Ann Duffy's Nostalgia. And with nostalgia, I think it's important to have a little bit of an understanding of the derivation of that term. Um, our first appreciation of it comes from Homer's treatment of Odysseus. Basically, um, Odysseus had a 20-year attempt to return to his home of Ithaca. And that notion of desire for return was, in the Greek, nostos. He suffered unbearably in the desire to get back to Ithaca. And as a result, he experienced this kind of suffering that was referred to by the Greek algos. Put the two together, nostos and algos, and you have nostalgia. So nostalgia, from its original derivation, was the psychological suffering caused by the desire to return. In terms of its medical history, which is quite interesting for this poem, we have to go back to 1688. Hoffer studied the behavioural symptoms of Swiss mercenaries who were coming down from the mountains into the lowlands and experienced these terrible symptoms that um, were as broad ranging as crying, becoming anorexic, even committing suicide. He suggested that they suffered from nostalgia, taking the Greek term. It was a kind of homesickness and he believed it was called by demonic possession. By the 1700s, the kind of reasoning for nostalgia had changed, but it was no less bizarre. The German Swiss physician J.J. Schuscher argued that it was due to the dip in atmospheric pressure and how the move from the top of the mountains down to the lowlands caused this excessive body pressurisation that had this negative effect on the brain. People at the time did think that this was a peculiarly Swiss disease and, you know, only the Swiss manifested nostalgia because of coming down from the mountains. Even right through the 17th century, there were some who argued that nostalgia was caused by the sound of cowbells. You know, the incessant ringing of cowbells caused the Swiss to suffer from this nostalgia. It's worth taking a look at why this is significant to the poem. If we take a look at the first couple of lines, those early mercenaries, it made them ill, leaving the mountains. The mercenaries could be Duffy referring to those Swiss mercenaries who were the original medical uh, focus for the idea of nostalgia. Leaving the high, fine air. So let's just take a look at the poem in a little more detail with that concept of the Swiss soldiers being used as a way to communicate certain ideas about the modern concept of nostalgia. First of all, we need to be aware of the structure. Unlike many of the poems we've looked at so far, this has irregular stanzas. We've got uh, 9, 9, 10 in terms of number of lines to each stanza, and there isn't a rhyme scheme. And we might want to consider why that's the case. Could be argued that the irregularity reflects the kind of uh, disorder associated with nostalgia. There is a problem with nostalgia. There's a hearkening back to the past that no longer exists. And that's what we're going to keep coming back to in this poem, this, this kind of pathos, this sadness that's created by desiring something that's no longer there. If we go to that third line, leaving the high fine air to go down, down, I'd argue that the down, down, could be treated both literally and metaphorically. If you want to treat it literally, it could be a reference to those Swiss mercenaries descending the mountains down to the lowlands. However, we know that nostalgia is an emotional um, issue. It's one where there's a sadness created, a longing for the past that's no longer realisable. And therefore, the person can get down, not in a dancey way, but in a kind of emotional sadness way. If we go on to what they got was money, dull, crude coins clenched in the teeth. Well, obviously, the mercenaries received money as payment. They may have put it in their teeth to test the veracity of it. You know, is it truly gold that they're receiving? But I think what's important is the kind of language that's used to this, and particularly the phonological technique. We've got this alliteration, crude coins clenched. You hear the harsh consonant sounds running through that. There's a sense in which these people have taken payment that's really not worth what they're giving up. They're sacrificing the pleasure of living in their homeland for this money, and it's not worth it. Strange food. Again, 
You could take this literally or metaphorically. They're putting coins in their teeth. That's literally very strange food. It's a very strange thing to put in their, their, in their mouths. But also, we could see this referring not to just the um, coins that are placed in the mouth, but also the strangeness could be relating to the kind of decision that's been made. The wrong taste, wrong sounds, wrong smells, wrong light, ro every breath, wrong. Everything about the displacement from the mountains, everything about the decision to move away is wrong. And that's really reinforced through that repetition. They add an ache here. The italics maybe suggest that kind of paralinguistic meaning. Here, there's a sense in which they're pointing to their heart. This is where the pain lies. They pined, wept, grown men. It's killing them. It was given a name. Uh, this becomes important for Duffy in the second stanza. The it referred to here is nostalgia itself. At first, people didn't know what nostalgia was. Um, they were searching for this kind of you know, medical definition of it, so some kind of justification of what it was. Once it was given a name, it became more real. It's a bit like um, shell shock, I suppose. You know, once it's defined, it becomes more realistic. It becomes something that you can attribute a name to and therefore make it credible. Here in Tel Aviv, there were those who stayed put, fearful of a sweet pain in the heart. Once people had heard that some people suffered from nostalgia, they were reticent about going down the mountains. Or once people were aware of nostalgia, they might be more reticent about going away. They realised what they may be losing. And it's communicated through this oxymoron of sweet pain. Yes, there's going to be a loss, there's going to be pain, there's going to be suffering if you move away from you know, a valued home. But also there's a sweetness in pursuing that which you desire. And um, it's reconciled through that, um, the ambivalence of that oxymoron. Once again, we've got phonological repetition. How it hurt in that heavier air to hear. It's almost like you're getting a series of exhalations. It's like, huh, huh, huh. Almost like sighs as well. There's, we're almost experiencing the kind of sadness through the sounds, phonologically represents the sadness and loss experienced by people who are experiencing nostalgia. One thing interesting here is the personification of the sad pipes. The pipes themselves are sad. The things that um, are reminding these people of their home. And notice the caesura here, separating them off. This idea of separation is, I think, really interesting because of the separation of the individual from their past, the nostalgia there is perhaps replicated in that caesura. In the dwindling light of the plains, a particular place, more alliteration, more repetition. Um, we've got this sense that there's a constant going over of things, a constant repetition, and that could be representative, I suppose, of thinking back to the past, trying to go back to something that was there before, where maybe you met a girl or or searched for a yellow ball in the long grass, found it just as your mother called you in, maybe suggest the unreliability of memory. But look at some of the specifics they've got there. It's not just um, a ball that was found in the grass. It's a yellow ball in the long grass. Memory has that quality. It can pick out very precise details and yet will miss out huge chunks of experience as well. And I think that sense of memory, the sense of our recollection of the past is communicated through that. We have an uncertainty in the word maybe, but then we've got precision and certainty in the choice of adjectives. Finally, the last stanza. But the word was out. The word being nostalgia. Suddenly everybody is aware of it. Some would never fall in love had they not heard of love. Uh, it's a very difficult concept, but it relates to the idea that uh, language creates a concept, I suppose. It gives you something that you can pin an idea down on, so that once the idea of nostalgia is labelled, people go, ah, nostalgia, yeah, that's what I've got. And so it becomes more universal, more understood widely. So the priest stood at the style with his head in his hands, the priest, a figure of authority, somebody who conveys ideas, conveys beliefs, as is the school teacher. Crying at the workings of memory through the colour of leaves. This is very figurative, um, very poetic. And we have to consider why it's through the colour of leaves. 
there's something romantic about this, and I think it, that nostalgia is a romantic experience, romantic with a capital R, this kind of love of the past and longing for the past that can't be retrieved. But the colour of leaves probably connote green, and green similarly has connotations and symbolises newness, new beginning, freshness. Does that perhaps suggest that the priest is focusing on the new life and has lost what was there before? Similarly, the school teacher opened a book to the scent of her youth, too late. Smells are very evocative of the past, but they can't be retrieved. It is too late. There may be a memory, there may be a hint of it, but you cannot return to it. It was spring when one returned, one being one of the Swiss mercenaries mentioned in the first line of the first stanza, with his life in a sack on his back to find the same street, with the same sign over the inn, the same bell chiming now on the clock, and everything changed. You have a tension between the repetition of same and then finally changed. And this is the thing, the thing about um, nostalgia. The place is the same, same, but time has passed. The person who experiences nostalgia is different. So even if everything else remains the same about the place, they have changed. It's impossible to recreate the past, and that's why there's the pathos. That's why there's, going back to the name of the collection of the poetry, the mean time. The past is lost. That's nostalgia.